All right, everybody, welcome back to another X Vault Gaming video. X Vault here, and yes, today we have to do an extra video this week. I'm trying to keep it back to the minimum of two videos a week, but we have to do another because today is monumental. The Mount Rushmore of salt is upon us at this point in time, the biggest that we've seen. So this is only going to be the tip of the iceberg or the tip of the saltberg, if you will. So let's go ahead and jump to it. All right, so like I was saying, what we're going to go over is the Mount Rushmore of salt. And again, we're just tapping into it. And if the Helldivers success, the Helldivers 2 success, wasn't bad enough for the Xbox fanboys out there. They're now faced with the dilemma of the fact that it finally came. They knew it was coming, but it was officially made at the time of this recording today that Xbox first party games are in fact coming over to PlayStation themselves, as well as, of course, Nintendo Switch. Now, that being said, those four games, real quick, for context, is Hi Fi Rush, Pentiment. Sea of Thieves, and of course, Grounded. So those are big games, uh, you know, two of them games as a service games in a way, but the other ones are not. So that being said, they're starting small, gonna keep going, and we'll kind of get to that here, but let's start off, let's get it going. One of our favorite frauds, posers, jumping into this fray much, much later, and decided to choose the team that he wanted to shill for, is on the losing side, if you want to call it that, during the console wars. Now, as you can see here, confirmed, Hi-Fi Rush is coming to PlayStation 5 on March 18th. I hope at Xbox P3, Phil Spencer, yes you, works on getting something from PlayStation for Xbox, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Final Fantasy XVI to start. I don't know what his delusion is with thinking that's going to happen. 100% is not going to happen, especially from the likes of you. Uh, that being said, you haven't even played any of these. You have nothing. You have no Steam achievements for any Final Fantasy games. You have no achievements on Xbox for any Final Fantasy games that are over there. You don't have anything to back up that you even like Final Fantasy, but you have been on this kick of wanting Final Fantasy games over there. Not happening. Keep dreaming. And it's not a trade where you get something as epic as Final Fantasy VII Remake and XVI for the likes of Hi-Fi Rush. Are you kidding me? I don't think so. Uh, keeping on here, MJ, of course, he's been featured a couple times, or they have, I don't know. And yet Xbox still doesn't have Final Fantasy VII Remake. Still excited for those to try these great games, however. I know, trying to find the positive out of this, uh, but again, you guys are latching on to Final Fantasy VII Remake. That is and would be more of a possibility than, let's say, Spider-Man 2 or Horizon or God of War or something like that. So I get the thought process behind it, but again, this isn't Hi-Fi Rush trading for Final Fantasy VII. Maybe Master Chief Collection would be a trade for that. You've got to think bigger in the picture. No, nobody wants Starfield. Anybody that's still capping for Starfield to this day, unless you're a huge sci-fi fan, nobody wants Starfield. <laughs> Look at my previous videos. Nobody on PlayStation cares or wants Starfield. And when I say nobody, I mean the majority. There's going to be always that, that slight minority out there that is going to want that sort of stuff. But for the majority, nobody wants that. They would have. It would have been a system seller for Xbox if people wanted it. Or more people moving over to PC. Let's keep going here. J-Rock. Now, I do want to quickly title this with the fact, we'll put this up, but this is technically the Salty Batch Files, right? But we need to call this a, a more special edition. This is the Sad Boy edition of the Salty Batch Files. Just want to, as you can see the theme here, now, now we're in the grieving and acceptance process here. But Xbox P3, Mr. Phil, I hear you and I'm listening, but when are you and the team getting a handle on games continuously skipping your console platform? He is in fact referring to two more third-party games that for some weird reason is skipping the Xbox console. We're talking about Monster Hunter Stories. Now, I saw this on the Switch. My boy has played uh, through this game and on it, really enjoyed it. I liked what, or not even on the Switch, but on, on Nintendo, right, in general with its other handhelds. Um, and it looked really good. So I'm really excited to try this out myself. I think that's great. Um, and then, of course, Gundam Breaker 4, as you can see here as well. 
Uh, so real interesting that these games are not hitting that console. I think there's a lot more underlying truth to this, but clearly J-Rock is very upset about this and like, you know, it just piles on. Not only are your first party games heading to your competitors' platforms, but you're also not getting some games you might even be interested in. Sad boy indeed. Sad boy indeed. And now we have to circle back around to Kareem here, of course. He's stating the same thing for the most part. But as you can see here, this is ridiculous at Xbox P3. Got a tag filled 24-7, of course, because he's going to listen to you, you fraud, you shill. How many amazing games like these are going to skip the Xbox? Well, I don't mind games coming or going from Xbox to other platforms. Uh, that same effort should be put to have games like these come to the Xbox that are skipping it. It's sad that these JP games skipped Xbox. Again, sad boy Kareem, still not understanding. Not only are you not getting Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, Final Fantasy XVI, but you're also not even getting the likes of Monster Hunter Stories and Gundam Breaker 4. At least it might be timed exclusives for the other platforms until a later time. We will have to see. So, keep crying a little bit, buddy. Lord Addict, of course. Giving the games we do to the platforms that get the majority of the games we don't. Cry me a river. A little bit more here. You have the choice to play on these platforms. You are the ones. You fanboys are the ones that deny yourself to play great games. Just because you have this undying undying loyalty to stay on certain brands. I don't understand, especially a brand that has failed you for well over a decade in many ways. I don't understand. I don't feel sorry for you and neither should anybody else. That's just the fact. Xbox really playing with fire. They starting to experiment with giving the games they control to other consoles. They also still missing key third party games. Xbox customers losing twice here. You've been losing more than twice just here, but previously to this, we've again been telling you this. And Phil Spencer, just last week, again, previous videos, feel free to recap, folks. They had a podcast, an exclusive podcast solidified to them, and Phil Spencer, the car salesman, the used car salesman, once again lying and stating that, of course, only four games were coming over there. It's going to be more than that. It's going to be more than that. He doesn't, he's way too vague. He pulls the wool over your eyes. You gotta stop. But let's continue. Good old Peter Ovo is really finally starting to break down a little bit. Some of these fanboys are starting to break down and just pull up that white flag, either understanding where the you know direction is heading or they're <laughs> stating that they're gonna go get a PC, go on that platform, because they just cannot stand PlayStation so much, even though everything is over there as well and plays better and 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 not just stating that you got the dual sense and all this stuff but i'm not going to get on a tangent there but they they just refuse it's it's one of those psychological issues that they have and that's why they have that undying loyalty and on and on but as you can see i will be buying xbox games or xbox systems on a case-by-case -case basis <laughs> jeez louise a case-by-case -case basis what other case-by-case -case basis did you need? Starting with the Xbox One, it was going down the crapper. Nothing has changed. What do you mean case-by-case -case scenario or case-by-case -case basis? I'm at a loss for words on that one. I, he's, yeah, I'm at a loss for words for a minute on that one. Right now, I do not see the case for buying the next Xbox console. So then you contradict yourself. Case by case basis, I, right now I don't see it. What, what's gonna change your mind? A one year timed exclusivity on Elder Scrolls Six? Is that gonna change your mind? What's your case by case scenario here? And what's the case for you not just playing on PC? I don't understand. This makes no sense. You're hypocritical. You're contradicting yourself the list goes on and on. What are you doing? <laughs> Jeez. Xbox Curator, everybody's favorite here. This will go down as the tweet that ended the console way, but not in a good way. Quoting what Xbox said here, which is crazy. The biggest games will be more than just one platform. Biggest games to me would be Elder Scrolls 6. Possibly Avowed, even though that looks kind of trashy to me right now. 
Do they consider Starfield the biggest games out there? One of the biggest games out there? The next Halo? Halo Infinite? Are we looking to port that over there as well? To other platforms as needed? Switch 2 even? Ooh, that's an open-ended question there. My suggestion to remaining Xbox fans, switch to PC, it's time. <laughs> Again, forget going to PlayStation. Uh, you know, it, there, there's a lot of pros and cons. Like I said, this isn't going to be what that video is about between console and PC. We'll get there. If you guys want to see that, please let me know. At this point in time, I don't think it matters. I think we know the difference, but I'm more than happy to put out the differences, namely the games and what you can do via console versus PC versus price, budget, all that good stuff. But anyways, let's keep going here. Uh, and of course, what I want to finalize is good old Jez. Now he's still salty, sad boy blues here. Maybe now finally Sea of Thieves will be eligible for best ongoing game at the Game Awards. Okay. As you can see, if you go on Metacritic, this has a score of 69, Jez, and everybody else out there, if you were unaware. Uh, this game didn't win Best Ongoing Game because it wasn't the best ongoing game and hasn't been the best ongoing game for multiple years. It's going up against games like Diablo series. It's going up against, you know, when Overwatch is at its peak. It was going up against Final Fantasy XIV. It's going up against of other, a lot of other games that were just better than it for that year for the most part. Correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments if I'm missing a, a year where this was the best choice they had to offer. But off of my top of my head, I do not honestly recall. And I think my memory is pretty good on that. Um, it's just, it was barren. It was basic. And they've done things to improve it. And what, they're on season 11 right now? Um, and I know they've streamlined some things. I know they've done a lot of good things as time's gone on, but it's taken forever to get there. And is it truly at the level that some of these other games as a service have gotten to? And now this year, again, it's going to be going up against Helldivers 2, which is a games as a service that is doing great. And if they continue to support it very well, have crossover stuff, I'm just saying. Resistance series, maybe Order 1886, the Hellgast from Killzone. I mean, the the Sony first-party IPs are limitless when it comes to that type of universe and what you could do with it. Um, not to mention just other cool things you can do within the games. They're coming out with mechs and stuff. So, point being, Jez, uh, no, this isn't a, you know politicking type of deal towards Sony and PlayStation like all the Xbox fanboys have always thought and said. That's not the case at all. It's not because, oh, it's, it's Sony, so they get a pass and they get game of the year and best this and this and this. And it's only because that Xbox clause, it's only because of that, you know, Xbox tag. It's only because of that, you guessed it, Xbox tax that they try to come up with for a narrative for months on end. Absolutely insane. Uh, that being said, We'll wrap it up there. Like I said, this is the tip of the iceberg. There's plenty of more to come. Plenty of more to come after the fallout of today. But that's just a taste. So I can't wait to share more and go over more with you all out there uh, in regards to the salt, the sad boy blues, whatever you want to talk about here. But that being said, thanks again for your support. <laughs> Man, at the time of this recording, you guys, we are at 1267. 1,267 subscribers out of that 1,500 goal. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much. That support means so much to me. Cannot thank you enough. That being said, definitely consider liking, commenting, helping out that algorithm. If you haven't yet, definitely consider subscribing, helping out a small content creator like myself it means the world. So thank you so much again. And uh, you know what, guys? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just remember, don't be a salty batch. All right, we'll see you all next time on the next X-Fall Gaming video. And until then, take care.